All right, guys, we are back. It is 3.43 a.m. in the Pacific. And we are going to get into part two of this podcast. And as I mentioned there at the end, the devil card came up for us the other uh, last night. Uh, and this is how it came up for us. First, an announcement. So another one of my classic segues. I am on Groupon now, and you can find me by going to Groupon and doing a search for the Healing Butterfly, and I have a campaign for different tarot and oracle card readings, and there's three different readings and three different ways to get the readings, and the price points through Groupon are... 19 39 and 69 and you can get them via the first option is a three card spread just like this it would be me doing a three card spread and and talking on audio and emailing you the audio and pictures of the spread and then for the six card spread it would be a video of the poll and photos and that's a so the first one's about a 20 20 25 minute max reading for the three cards for the six cards it'll be right around 45 minutes and for the 10 card spread angel tarot and oracle that is a live over zoom conference with me for that reading and that one is the $69 one normally that one is um gosh I think it's like 200 or whatever something like that I don't know it's a great discount let's <laughs> just put it that way all of these are a great discount on Groupon so if you're interested in working with me and you uh, want to try me out for not a whole lot of money I highly suggest uh, well, it was forty-five dollars to the three-card spread is the retail price that I have on my, or is it forty-five or fifty-five on my website? So nineteen dollars on Groupon is a great deal, a really great deal, and you get the recording just like this, so you can listen to it over and over again. Uh, same thing with the with the video one. It's just like watching a a tarot reading tarot yeah it's a tarot or, or tarot and oracle whatever that I do on my YouTube channel where you're seeing me do the poll sometimes I I just show the table sometimes it's me in the camera uh but anyway it would be like that and you can watch that over and over again and then the one that we do live that gets recorded too you can watch that over and over again so it's not it's so what's really cool about it, it's not like just like a one and done thing something we can revisit and uh so anyway so that's that so the other day i was doing photos for my campaign and and i had stuff laid out uh and the angel tarot were there and they were sitting there for like two days because i was waiting to hear back from groupon and the process is slow, especially now, I guess, but I just started working with them. So this is my experience. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's slow going back and forth. Oh, excuse me. So anyway, when last night when I was like, all right, I can finally, or yesterday I was like, I can pick this stuff up. I had crystals out and different cards all kind of sitting up if you go to the group on you'll see the photo you'll see what I'm talking about there's more photos coming they just haven't put them up yet like I said it's a slow process so anyway picking them up there's this card at the very bottom that didn't come with the rest of the stack and when I went to try to like pick it up to get it to come it just still wouldn't come with the rest of the stack and then I was guided I was like what is this card this card is here for a reason and you need to look at it and I was like okay so I turned it over and it's the 15 card in the major arcana this is the angel tarot and that's called the ego card 
in traditional tarot, it's called the devil. So I was guided last night to get into what this card is and to open up the book that uh, it's a companion book that comes with the angel tarot. It's called the big book of angel tarot. I refer to this book a lot. I got it when I got my angel tarot cards and it is on page 123. It's card number 15. And this is most certainly about what we're dealing with now globally with the coronavirus and about uh, what's going on with that on, on different levels. And you will see what I'm talking about here. So we're going to get right into it. Oh, here we go. Ego. The ego card reflects situations, usually of our own making, where we feel trapped. It seems as though our path has become completely hidden and it feels like there's no way forward. So just at the very beginning there, this is hitting home. <laughs> Now, a lot of people would be like, well, this is definitely not my own making. And while that could be true, remember what I said. This is a highly contagious virus. On one hand, we don't know really who's responsible for what because you could be asymptomatic and be giving this to other people. Aside from that, just being in the collective, being part of, the, of society on some level renders us all culpable and responsible. And, and if we don't understand that, we have, a, we have a lot to learn. And, and this is true almost always. The ego card or the devil card refers reflects situations usually of our own making where we feel trapped it seems as though our path has become completely hidden and it feels like there's no way forward this is also where we are right now as a collective we don't where there's nowhere to go to say this is where it's going to end this is when it's going to get exponentially better this is when things are going to get quote unquote back to normal well we're living in a new normal now we've entered into a new <clears throat> into a new paradigm We've had a shift in reality and it's not ever going back. We're in the middle of a mass exodus of, of souls leaving the planet through this, through this means. Um, and, and we're having people checking in with their mortality more than ever. We're having people getting spiritual more than ever. We're having people at home and giving our planet a break from all the movement and the pollution, excuse me. All right, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so anyway, I'm gonna continue here because I got distracted and lost my train of thought, to be honest, <laughs> it'll come back to me. Okay, of course, this is an illusion that we have no way forward. Um, Maybe that's where I was at, talking about how we know have no way forward. We just don't have, a, there is no, there's nobody to turn to to say this is when it's going to all be better. Um, and we're, we're not that far into it. So we really need to take into consideration, especially here in the United States, that this has only been going on for a couple weeks. And... We have a long way to go and there's a lot of jumping the gun and running to conclusions and or jump running to them, jumping to conclusions and, and wanting answers and making spec speculations and, and projecting without considering reality. And that is going to make things worse. <laughs> um, But it definitely feel like it's like, how do we move forward? What's happening? What do we do? What's going on right now? There's like no way forward, literally. Of course, this is an illusion, okay? 
We aren't really as stuck as we think we are. And freedom comes from a change of our thoughts from pessimism to optimism. So we need to understand and recognize that while there's a lot in flux, a lot we are out of control with, a lot that, that can be threatened, like livelihood and, and health, that this is a, a global experience and we can see this from different Uh, from different points of view and decide to take and make a, a negative and turn it into a positive. We have the ability to do that. Uh, and depending on your situation, you are going to have a different ways of doing that. And there's going to be a new coming together and understanding and a new sense of community with people and, and people that that have more and ex excessive amounts of more are going to be not all of them but some of them are going to be very generous with what they're doing to help their communities and their fans and their and uh or their customers or whatever uh, because there's people there's a small amount of people with most of the world's wealth and they are going to be asked to step up and they're going to be stepping up in different ways than they have in the past so there's a lot going on you know just in that sense that that keeps coming to me because this is going to last longer than we anticipate like people are like oh this will be done in a couple weeks no it won't be it won't be done in a couple months we are going to have a a new shift in june for the eclipse on the 21st but that remains it's not like that's an an end point either it's some type of of reset and shift that's going to be happening at that time but yeah okay continuing we are okay we aren't really as stuck as we think we are and freedom comes with a change of our thoughts from pessimism to optimism Ego can also reveal other significant challenges such as addiction or dependency that can hold us back from happiness. As such, this is a very important card in tarot since it can give us insight into our clients or family members' challenges with substance abuse. This card sometimes refers to someone who's too focused on material or worldly things and therefore might indicate excessive debt. It can also signify those who aren't taking responsibility for their actions or choices. Okay, so again, if you know what's going on in the world, this is going to seriously hit home to you uh, because it's so ridiculously on point. Starting from the top, ego can reveal other sig significant challenges such as addiction or dependency. Okay, let's stop right there. During this time right now, and I was thinking about this before I read this last night, that there's a lot of people, and because I was feeling this energy, that are going fucking nuts, stir crazy, and are, and these are the people that are also not listening and going out and commingling with other people because they can't stop themselves. Uh, and what this is about, um, and, and with some people, they, they have these, you know, quote unquote choices that they can make. And with some people, they can't. So it just all depends on your particular brand of addiction. If you're somebody who um, is used to going to a casino, but now all the casinos are closed. Like, fucking Vegas is closed. Okay? Like, you can't. Uh, this is a, that has never happened. 
New York is closed. Vegas is closed. LA is closed. Like everywhere is closed. Like you can't go to a restaurant. Even the groceries you want to buy, they're either not there or you're limited. Um, if you can get stuff, you're, you should be grateful because it's not easy right now to get food. Um, and for a lot of people and, uh, like I'm used to going to the store and getting two almond milks, two soy milks, another almond milk, another oat milk. Like I'm really into my milks and I make a little cocktail. I like blend them all up together. It's really yummy. Um, and they last me, like I do that, like, and it lasts me for week, like several weeks. Um, but now at the grocery store, you get one, you buy one. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I went to, in, I used Instacart for the first time and, and I got a message as they were shopping saying you, you have to pick cause you're only limited to one per person. And I was like, damn, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I've been saying stores need to start limiting because they're in charge of this and they just can't go letting people go willy fucking nilly because look at what we have going on in all of our grocery stores it's absolutely insanity it's insane insane so it's good to hear and see that stores are are putting limits on things because it, it they have to but it's just like one it's but i get it because there's not a lot to go around and you can't have one, you know, I, I totally get it. It's just frustrating. You know, it's just like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are our addictions that, that this reality compromises and pushes on our comfort and goes, ah, I don't like this. You know, it could be a lot of things. You know, you can't go to your favorite burger joint and they don't, they're not delivering or whatever. I think most places are. Um, or at least open for pickup or whatever. I mean, they're just having to shift and it sucks for the wait staff because they don't, they're not, they can't do waiter, waiter jobs anymore, but they're going to have to do other things now, you know, or, or not. And, 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 but listen, <laughs> nobody's kicking anybody out of a house these days. That's not going to happen. And if you need food, you ha you can't just sit there and starve. You have to go to a pantry, find your local food pantries, and go to them and get food. It's not the greatest food sometimes, but it's food. Um, I've done that a lot in my life when I've had to. And I was grateful that it was there because it got me by and I was super stoked on it. And sometimes it's really good stuff, actually. Uh, restaurants and grocery stores donate to pantries all the time. People donate to pantries all the time, especially right now. There's going to be a lot of stuff at, at pantries. So, so please, if you need food, look up your local food pantries and see what they got going on. Uh, ask your friend, you know, talk to your friends and neighbors. Talk to people you know and go, look, I got, I, uh, two weeks before this happened, I lost my job and I just was getting a new job. And then this happened. I was out of money and now I don't have any money <laughs> and I'm not going to get unemployment. And I didn't, and I just, I can't even feed myself right now or my animals. You're going to have to ask people for help. That's just the way, and, and people that know, you know, people in these situations that are fucked over because they live day to day or paycheck to paycheck and, and we all got shut down with so fast seemingly that that's going to, you know, reach out to people and ask them go, or just tell them I bought you a, you know, I got you a bag of food come pick it, you know, I'm going to drop it off at your door or I'm sending you money on PayPal or Cash App. Make sure you go buy some some Yummy Eats or whatever. Buy uh, gift cards and, you know, set somebody up with something for free. Just, you know, just reach out and help people. And with that said, I have 10 boxes of Dinnerly I can give out to people uh, or actually make it nine. Nine boxes of Dinnerly I can give out to people 
and um it's just a thing that dinnerly is doing and this is in lookupdinnerly.com it's where they send you you pick out your menu of what you want and they have vegetarian options but it comes with like like some of them are like there's cheese in it but you can always replace it with vegan cheese um, and, and you make these recipes that you pick out and they send you all the ingredients and one box of three meals for two people feel, feeds me a lot. It's a lot of food. Um, it's like, I mean, it depends on how much you eat, right? So for me though, it's like two to three meals per recipe. So I'm getting like seven or nine per box of full-on yummy meals that are like full-blown meals that I don't have to think about, I don't have to shop for. It's just done and delivered to me. And especially in these times, it's a sweet deal. It's a really good company. It's it's the cheapest meal prep delivery service that there is. And I started off with a promotion with... Um, what was it? Uh, half offs. It was like fourteen dollar boxes with plus shipping. Shipping's like eight ninety nine, so it was like twenty two or twenty twenty three or twenty four dollars for for nine meals. I mean, that's crazy. That's a great deal, and you're making it yourself, and it comes to you. So anyway, if you're interested in that, please look into it look into dinnerly.com and if you would like a free trial box you can send me an email or a dm in my instagram or my twitter uh i don't really check facebook so i would either email me dm me on instagram or twitter and and leave me your email and that's all that i need it you could we could do this anonymously well i kind of you need your first and last name I guess for the form but that's all I need I don't need an address I don't need any of that stuff it sends you an email and then you pick out your recipes and I think you just have to pay for shipping and then you get a free box of food so anyway first come first serve on that you guys uh <laughs> so anyway with that said with back to the addiction thing so aside from people needing food and stuff but I got kind of got off on a tangent there when it comes to this addiction thing this is just so this could be like comforts that we used to that we're just really frustrated with that we're not like going to starbucks like how many bazillion people are used to their daily or double daily starbucks that they can't get anymore because maybe they're not you know open uh i mean whatever fill in the blanks and think about that for other people, the people you know, your friends, your family, possibly that, that you know, you're noticing some after a couple weeks, it's starting to get to them kind of thing. Uh, and just depending on how different your life is, like there's people that are used to traveling and not being around their children, or around their parents so much. And now everybody is home and and uh, and hopefully people are taking advantage of this time and getting close and and uh sharing and talking and 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 really making the most of it and that's why this is talking about your perception you get to decide how trapped you are within your reality so like the same way that we've heard stories from countless people being in jail or prison you know being prisoned um that were in you know really bad circumstances that they couldn't get out of i mean our circumstances are not too bad um hopefully you're at home you know you're at home and if you have a home be grateful for that home because a lot of people are in this situation totally exposed and extremely vulnerable and then they're being put into mass plate like big rooms together like gyms and stuff where they're just commingling energy it's very dangerous um and it's just you know just imagine just how shitty it is to be homeless anyway but then during a pandemic i mean that's rough that is rough uh so 
to make it easier, what we're getting with this information is that we need to think, we need to take into consideration the reality and, and have perspective on where it is that we're at. And, and instead of projecting into the unknown that none of us have any barometer of even even some of us who who are, are on a level of understanding way more it's still very foggy and I get it on a lot of levels and it's still very foggy as to how this is going to play out because so much has yet to be determined and it just really depends on a lot of things on a lot of people. This is a, a total collective and global situation. And, and oh, that's what I think I was talking about before, um, was we have to think about how the effects on our planet, on Gaia right now. It's like people at home, there's, there's wildlife like coming into places that they never come into. And there's, there's uh, birds and, and, and fish in the canals in Venice and there's and there's peacocks walking through uh places in Scotland like down the street I mean you're just seeing like all these I'm I've been seeing videos and and places just like in awe of like what's going on and if you look at the pollution map it pollution is so way down because nobody's flying nobody's driving nobody's on big disgusting cruise ships like um well <laughs> still are but for the most part they're not uh it's just it's amazing the rest and the healing that this is this is doing to help Gaia and as a collective I mean I've been here I've been watching podcasts and hearing people that are normally constantly in movement busy going from place to place uh, flying all the time, just boom, boom, just driving it hard all the time. And they're just like, yeah, just not doing much. Just I'm more rested than I've ever been. I feel fantastic. I've been spending time with my family. I'm doing projects I've never done. And, and you hear these people and, you, and you're like, look at that. Like you didn't even know you needed this, but you did. And you never would have done it for yourself if, if it didn't happen to you. And it, even though it is happening for you as well, and we need to see that, we need to decide to turn this inside out situation and, and see another side of it, and that will help a lot. But we need to acknowledge the things that we're not able to do, places we're not able to go, people we're not able to see, which is the reality for a lot of people. Um, you're not able to see people you're used to seeing and having, you know, together time and you're not for a lot of people they're not used to being alone so much they're not used to being so solitary and they fill their life with a lot of busyness and they don't have that anymore and so a lot of things are, are going to be coming up more and more and so if it's just to acknowledge this for yourself and for the people in your life and for the collective as a whole that this is going on is very very healing and clearing and important because it's an actuality it's a reality it's a part of the paradigm shift that we are put into um check and to understanding and seeing things for what the what for what they are which is you know things get pushed up to the to the it's very, it's very symbolic of it being spring and and this you know this this coming up from the earth time to be seen what has been underground coming up from the earth to be seen so we need to see that for what it is within ourselves at this time and then what how that paradigm shift is going to is going to take us into our new reality coming in the next few months we have a new stargate coming up here in a couple of days on 44 so it's 44 2020 essentially 444 and this is going to be a doozy people but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's continue here um, okay. All this card sometimes refers to someone who's also too focused on material or worldly things and therefore might indicate excessive 
debt. We just went two trillion dollars in debt in our in our country um, to help to help us all out. So that's definitely happening. We have people that are definitely more focused on the material things uh, than they should be. More about the economy, more about uh, inflation and depressions and things like this that is putting energy into these things. It's not being focused um, or uh, we're not, uh, energy is not being focused into really the matter at hand and what's going on, which is, is to get on a certain page and level with this virus and and to deal with it in a really systematic way so it's focus it's be, this focused is focused energy for the most part is not necessarily which where it should be and there's been a lot of distraction around uh, big corporations and money and debt and bailing them out and all that stuff attached to this as well so a lot of things coming up and definitely when we're talking about our president, the one at the helm, I call him the captain, we're the Titanic, Corona is the iceberg. I've made that distinction and I think that should hit home to most people so they can understand what it is that we're dealing with on all levels. And the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Donald Trump is, is very narcissistic, very me and money centric, doesn't really give a shit about people or, or, or anything. Uh, he does not take responsibility. He has said that himself. Um, he wants accolades, but he doesn't want responsibility. Imagine that. Uh, and so it says, it can signify those who aren't taking responsibility for their actions or choices. Being more focused on material or worldly things and therefore it might indicate excessive debt. So all of that on point. Okay, moving on. The dreamer's journey. Our next stop on the path of the dreamer's journey is the need to deal with our human egos. It's an indicator that we may not have a clear view of ourselves or our motives. We may be confused by what feels like limitations that we can't get past. But in reality, these confinements are our own creations. What makes this card so powerful and helpful is that once we realize that our entrapments are self-made, we can then see that we must also have the power to free ourselves. When we allow our egos to take over, we often find ourselves making choices that are based on fear or negative thinking. This hinders our progress and can create self-fulfilling prophecies that we'd be better off without. It's also a reminder that our focus, that our focus on daily life and our acquisition of things may not be what really matters right now. Perhaps it's time to review our priorities with an exclamation point. <laughs> so again, really, really on point here. Um, we have to deal with our human egos. It's an indicator that may, we may not have a clear view of ourselves or our motives. And a lot of people are being faced with this right now because when a lot of control and habits and schedules and freedom are stripped away and friends and social and family that or whatever, when a lot of these, these things that hold up our foundation to our to our constructed life and our programming uh, starts to get toppled over, we're left just like, oh, what is all this now? That would, This is me and me and m my ego and how I see things and my perspective and stuff and really brings into the, into the fro forefront what are our, what is our, our, the view of ourselves and our motives? What are our limitations and things we can't get past? What are these confinements and what, and what we make of them? Because from my perspective, you can be at home, but you're, you're, 
anywhere that you're at, you, you can plug into the universe at large and you're not trapped at all. That's, that's a constructed, programmed uh, reality that you're, that you're bought into. That, that your world is as big as, as what <clears throat> you can get through the internet, through television, through movies, through, through, you know, things like that. When the reality is, is that if you meditate, if you go within, if you connect, if you seek the advice of your, of your spirit tribe, you have the, the universe at your disposal. So, So that's why it says here, these confinements are our own creation. So it's our own creation on the level, phys on the physical plane in, in which um, different individual actions got us to this place, to this new paradigm in the physical, but also uh, on, the, on the energetic and, and emotional and spiritual levels as well about being confined and how we how we deal and assimilate to that okay so when we so when i was reading this when we allow our egos to take over we also often find we make choices based in fear and negative thinking this hinders our progress and we can create self-fulfilling prophecies that we'd better that we'd be better off without so when i was reading that i just see this like person or people going oh I'm not feeling well I got to go get tested for corona and they go and stand in line with with people who actually have it when they don't and they end up getting it because they were scared that they had it so they went and they got it and this is what I see with a lot of people that they're instead of just not <laughs> instead of just not I mean it's good to get tested but ideally if you could do a drive through test and not be standing out in the air breathing and being around people even six feet away is not going to cut it because if somebody sneezes 20 feet from you those micro particles of, of in that air that I explained in the in the first part of this episode, that's going to float in the air. And it's, it's, so it's airborne and that can just fly and you will inhale that and you can, it can go and do what it's supposed to do, which is stick to the, the gooey parts of your lungs and replicate because that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to be very extremely strong and self-replicating once it has a host. So, and it, it doesn't take much. Um, so the advice on that note would be don't put yourself in harm's way to get the answer if you have corona because it's not like, oh, you have corona, here's this medicine that's going to make it better that we could give you right now. Um, and you're, you're putting yourself in harm's way. Or if you do have it and there's people around you who don't have it, then you're putting them in harm's way. So the advice here would be unless you can – do a test in a private atmosphere don't and see what happens <laughs> if you start to feel really shitty uh if you're listening to this podcast i would say contact me and i can help you out <laughs> aside from that uh contact your doctor and or wherever it is that you get your medical advice from and and figure out what you should do um, but we all know that there's no med there's no real treatment or medicine for this and there's no medicinal cure. I'm not even with what I do, I'm saying that I'll cure you. It really depends on where you're at with that. It's not like, you know, you wouldn't test positive for it anymore once I get done with you, but it's about eradicating as much of that energy as possible from the body um, if we're all in alignment to do that and, and then infusing the body with infinite love light. So it's healing and shielding it from neg from negative energy. We just do all this stuff. So 
it's about dealing with the symptoms the what's going on with this with the energy and and you know just so it's not so it's a healing but it's not like an instant cure i want to make sure people understand that uh so anyway be it's better to be in this situation with with this virus it is better to be safe and it's better to be safe and confined than it is to be curious about if you have it assume that you do just assume that you do decide that you do especially if you start having symptoms just go oh i've got coronavirus what am i going to do about it other than rather than i'm going to go see that i do or i don't because just assume that you have it and stay away from people and you get people infected you you're past the major point of, in, of infecting other people anyway not that you can't still infect people when you're really really sick obviously you can but it's it's different now because you know you're sick you can also just have the flu you could also just be run down and, and your body is just getting rid of negative energy to keep you, your, to boost your immune system up in the end. But in the meantime, you are more susceptible because your body is going through a process. Regardless of what it is, regardless of what you call it, it's going through a process. It's going through an energetic process in one way or another. You have to maintain your own um, perimeter uh, guard your energy do what you know to do to keep or to boost your your energy so meditate take baths use crystals um uh take naps go in the sun uh you know all of these things stay away from stressful situations and people if you can as much as possible don't project don't decide that you're gonna die decide that you're gonna you know definitely beat this and again i would you know, reach out to me, which would be definitely a smart thing to do. Okay, moving on. We're getting into the symbolism of this card, and I'm going to be taking a picture of this ego card and putting it on my Instagram. I'm also going to be creating a forum uh, topic on on this, and I've been meaning to do that with my with my podcast episodes because I really want to open up a dialogue with people to be able to, to go in there and to discuss um, so hopefully people can do that and want to do that as we move forward and this would be definitely one a good one to start off with because <laughs> well we'll continue here but it's very on point. It just continues to be very on point. Okay, here we go. Symbolism. The dreamer has experienced a bit of a detour he didn't mean to take and finds himself chained and unable to move. His chains are attached to a pot of gold to represent that he's bound to his material concerns and the worldly fears of those around him. He wears a mask that binds his vision to symbolize that in his current state, he can't really see where he's headed or how very off course he is. A butterfly, a symbol of evolution, zips past to remind us that moving fast, sorry, moving past our current shortcomings is completely within our power. The crane is a symbol of spiritual enlightenment. This one has followed the dreamer into his predicament to remind him of his ability to change his life. It's always possible to, to make course corrections in order to match the life purpose we came to earth to accomplish. Archangel Jophiel has come to guide the dreamer out of his non-spiritual focus and lead him back to a place of happiness and fulfillment. Angel number 15 can be very fortuitous, drawing in, pros drawing in prosperity and abundance. However, it can also be a number that's very sensitive to criticism. 
Harsh words from others can create a negative self-perception that can be difficult to escape. Of course, anyone can change. We all have free will. Staying positive and taking the steps necessary to necessary to improve our lives can help us get free and clear of the ego card so and again i'm being told to read to point out one and five is six and six is the reverse of nine okay so let's just hold on to that for a bit Archangel Jophiel's name means beauty of God. When our thoughts have fallen into negativity or pessimism, she can help us rise above it to regain our optimism and see our way clear to freedom. When we've lost our way, Jophiel reminds us just how beautiful life can be. Her color is a dark pink and her presence is often associated with the scent of roses. And astrology. Astrologically, this card is Capricorn, a very responsible, practical, and competent sign that often deals with business. Because it has a deep desire to build something of importance, it can be associated with overworking and or being overly focused on making money. So that's the end of what's written in the big book of angel tarot for the ego slash devil card and this whole thing with um dealing with money and business and uh and all that is definitely what is on everybody's mind right now what about business what about commerce what about the economy what about my bank account what about money everybody is here right now everybody is thinking this right now because everybody is connected to everybody else and since we're all in it together it's like uh uh like <laughs> everybody looking at each other like <laughs> Who's got this? And everybody's like, ah. Um, hopefully your government's got it and your government's got your back. It's not going to cover everybody. And so this is why we said earlier that, you know, we're going to have to take care of each other. It's we cannot just rely on our governments to do that. Our government doesn't see full, full spectrum. It sees very linear, very pinpointed in what it does to accomplish what it needs to accomplish. And our government is dealing with a lot, especially a president that is inept and does not see reality. Because this, if we, if we look at this reading, at this, at this, At this explanation of this card, a lot of this, excuse me, a lot of this we can look at and, and attribute to what's going on, especially uh, with the United States. The United States is known as one of the most powerful or the most powerful country in the United, or in the world. Or at least it calls itself that. I don't really know how some other countries feel about that. <laughs> it is what it is. The United States definitely is control and holds the puppet strings of a lot of shit that goes on and around and up and down in the world. That is for sure. That is for sure. So we definitely have a shit ton of power here in the, the United States uh, globally. Uh, whether it's politically or through commerce, uh, that's just the way that it is. And But now, you know, it's just not the same. And we have this situation with, with Donald Trump where, and I just want to make it known, like I'm not necessarily a political person, but I have had to be somebody paying attention to a certain degree on what's going on politically because it is tied into the energies of the collective and this is how the collective expresses their consciousness in our society 
and um, the collective energies created the situation in which we have the president that we do for a reason. He's there for a purpose and for a reason. And if it wasn't for the things that he does or doesn't do or say or doesn't say, uh, it wouldn't cause a chain reaction in the collective to see things and do things and, and, and react in certain ways. And, and so he is a catalyst in a lot of ways. But, he, but in this situation with what's going on, he's a catalyst to a lot of things that are, that are adding to the energy, adding to negative energy, adding to the, the possibility of the virus taking hold of more and more and more and more people because he is so business and money-centric that that takes the priority of the reality that's going on with this virus because he doesn't quite understand uh, because he doesn't want to because he knows that it's a reflection on him what happens at this point he knows that information came much sooner than he reacted to and uh, he he cannot face a lot of these these truths and so he lashes out at other people he makes stuff up he starts narratives that create energies like we're gonna open up everything by Easter which is absolutely asinine and everybody with a brain cell thinks so because they see it for what it is they see that the hospitals already overwhelmed and understaffed and underprepared and with not enough equipment. And most people understand that we have just begun. Uh, Florida is is just come is going to be coming up with increasingly high 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 numbers. So is the middle of the United States. Um, I'm seeing Nebraska being a big one, Montana being another big one, um, Indiana, Ohio, uh, the Deco everywhere. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just going to, as time goes on, because there is so much movement and travel, like we said in the first episode, this happens through travel. And so in these last few weeks, we've had, or months, weeks and months, we've had Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, we've had... Uh, before that Halloween and then we had the whole summer before that and trust me this was this was moving earlier than we think and um, just in different incarnations and and so now we're into January we have New Year's and then we have uh, Valentine's Day, more travel. We're getting into so much going on as far and just people just the way people move anyway. But with in these last few weeks there's just been it seems like the reason for more movement it, it, between December and March versus let's say April and June. I think anybody could say oh yeah people probably travel more during those times and this is exactly when this was on its way so that is something to think about and to understand when we are looking into the future and uh we have a we have a battle on different on different levels here okay so we're going to move on a little bit here from the devil card. We're going to get back to it. We are going to we are going to get back to it. Uh, but what we're told to do now is get into the nines. And I'm going to explain this. Yesterday when I was I was doing this other video, these videos, how this turned into this thing last night where a lot of this came up. Uh, 
I was I went into my book for the Kabbalistic Tarot, a textbook of mystical philosophy. I got this book a couple months ago, and it's amazing. And uh, or maybe yeah, end of January. So it's a really amazing book. I gotta say, I love it. So very insightful, and it's just meant to be mine. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> and uh, and I love it. So I was looking up the the devil card in this book because there's a lot of information here very pertinent information but you know when you open a book and then you're going to flip through the front to, to look at the index or, or the table of contents well i just happen to stick my hand in and open up to page 111 and the nines and i actually have all this on video because i was talking about it and i was i had all this on video you could see like me pointing at the book when this all came about um, and like I said, I will be posting the video of, so the original of me kind of working all this out was really interesting last night and there was a lot of number business going on and, um, first I want to, I'm going to back this up a little bit before I get into that. There was another, um, what page is that? Oh yeah. One. On page 140 of this book, we have an illustration. There's lots of illustrations in this book. It's, it's, it is a textbook. It's like, it, it, it reads just like a textbook. Um, so on page 140, it's the illustration of parts of the soul. And it's figure number 29 on page 140. And it says... I'll take a picture of this and I'll put this on my highlights as well in my Instagram and in the forum. So anyway, it says this very complicated chart is based on the idea that each of the triangles on the tree represents a given part of the soul. Oh, this, I'm sorry. This is the tree of life. So that this is the tree of life and this is the parts of the soul. Sorry, I didn't point that out. <sighs> Each of the triangles of the tree represents a given part of the soul, the spiritual self, the higher self, and the personality. If we accept this idea, we are accepting that nine of the paths shown in black are givens. So star, sun, tower, hermit, justice, strength, empress, magician, fool, uh... Oh, it's actually in the opposite direction. It would be full magician, empress, uh, strength, hermit, justice, tower, star, sun. Is that some more this is where I did I said it backwards the first time. Um, each being the positive, negative, or balance of one aspect of the soul. The question must then be asked, how do the other 13 paths relate to the given nine? And the other 13 paths are high priestess, lover, empress, chariot, hierophant, uh, hangman, wheel of fortune, devil, death, judgment, moon, and universe. Okay. So the question must then be asked, how do the other 13 paths relate to the given nine? The given nine, once again, full magician, empress, strength, hermit, justice, tower, star, and sun. So the given nine are the given processes um, that all souls are going to understand the principle of within their journey but there's these other paths that lead to um different places so there's different there's the straight path there's the left and then there's the right there's intersecting um quadrants here that can take you in different in different directions and it is a complicated path why because life is complicated <laughs> that's the short answer <laughs> <clears throat> um, so anyway, back to page 111. <laughs> I'm 
the nines on page 111 definitely not a coincidence that the nines are on page 111 okay so i'm gonna read about the nines nines the nine of wands is first um so but first generally the nines just in general generally the nines show very great fundamental force executive power because they rest on a firm base power for good and evil okay so that's the nines and this is very very true we have said and if you've been around the nines also represent the light bodies the light workers who are incarnate at this time to help humanity through this transition in one way or another on soul mission fully cognizant and aware before landing slash being birthed so you you are if you're a nine you have this great um soul power and connectedness M many and most light workers do not know what they are um and don't don't assess their life on that level and don't conduct their life with that in mind this is going to be changing more and more in the coming days weeks and months of course as things unfold but uh there's more and there's more information about the nines on my website as well okay again executive power because they were some rest on a firm base power for good and evil again very much in alignment with we're thinking about executive power presidential power resting on a firm base the firm base of the white house of the government that being a super strong firm base and power for good or evil most definitely okay so let's start with nine of wands lord of great strength moon and sagittarius angels of the deacon erythiel and seriath this is yasad in uh as a at sorry these these words i'm still getting used to this is yasad in at Zilleth, the influence of Yasad in the world of pure spirit. The lunar powers acquire great strength in Sagittarius, although wherever Yasad and the moon are connected, there is always another side to the coin. Successes are accompanied by strife and apprehension. The good health which this aspect conveys is certain, but with doubt about the course it may later take. In divination, the card means great strength, power, recovery from sickness. As I was saying, those who will recover, who get sick and will recover, uh, they have a greater life force they have a a way to fight off this infection and it and it will actually work to their benefit that they go through this battle to a certain degree nine of cups lord of material happiness angels of the deacon saliath and ariel this is yasad in brina the or sorry, Bria, I always want to add an N in there, Bria, the influence of Yasad in the mental world. Here, the benevolence of Jupiter functioning through the water of Pisces affects happiness and satisfaction in Malkuth. This is a card of pleasure and sensuality, which should be compared to the Ten of Cups, the success of which is more lasting. Both the Crowley and Golden Dawn cards show nine cups overflowing and arranged in a square intended to suggest chest Jupiter and the perfection of water force here. Weight, on the other hand, illustrates the more mundane aspects of the card in its meaning of complete success and the fulfillment of wishes. So again, if you're not familiar with or if this is your first go around here with me, this textbook talks about uh for the most popular tarot card decks uh that are all under the 
are all made with the ideas of the Golden Dawn. It's called the Golden Dawn or the, what is it? The, the um, I just, I think it's spacing out and I'm getting tired. The Order of the Golden Dawn. Thank you very much. The Order of the Golden Dawn. Um, so those who were in the or Order of the Golden Dawn, these four different men created these four different tarot decks. And in this book, and I'll take a picture of this as well, there are, or pictures I should say, there are pictures of each of the tarot cards of each of these decks. So for each of the the nine of wands we have four cards for the nine of cups and so or so and that that's how this goes with this book so you could see these pictures and what he's talking about and so he's helping us understand why and what what these all mean and what it's connected to and their symbolism okay so next is nine of swords lord of despair and cruelty mars and gemini Angel the Angels of the Deacon, Anival, and Machiel. This is Yasad in Yetzirah. The influence of Yetzira, sorry, Yetzira in the astral world. It takes little familiarity with astrology to recognize that the fiery Mars energy could do no good in the sign of dualities. In the Golden Dawn card, the rose has been completely destroyed, while Crowley's version shows poison and blood dripping from the nine jagged and rusty swords. Waite's card stresses the card's despair and the other divinatory meanings of illness, suffering, and cruelty. So again, very telling with what we have going on here. I think that goes without saying. Uh... It's a sign of dualities, the sick, the, the healthy, the strong and powerful, the weak and meek, uh, those in, in power with, with money and stuff and those that are poor and, and, and how that influences illness, suffering, and cruelty. Continuing, Nine of Pentacles, Lord of Material Gain, Venus and Virgo, Angels of the Deacon, Haziel and Aldria. This is Yasad in As Asia, the influence of Yasad in the material world. Venus and Virgo brings great efficiency, but with a relative lack of overt feelings. The aspect tends also to favor the amassing of things. It is thus a card of material gain. This is suggested by the Golden Dawn Pentacles, each of which has a fully developed rosebud inside it. The central one having two buds to indicate continuing growth and acquisition on the physical plane. So what this is telling us is that there is always going to be the continuing of material gain always it's just shifting and and how that shift is going to manifest really that's part of that cloudy fuzzy part how is this going to play out because the material is connected to and, and the, the material world is connected to the astral world, right? Connected to the, the spiritual world or the mental world, right? They're all connected. So that's part of what's, what's up in the air. Okay, so... Okay. Crowley's card is particularly interesting, being far more complicated than it might first appear. He says of it, the discs are arranged in an equilateral triangle of three, apex upwards, close together, and surrounded at some distance by a ring, six larger rings in the form of a hexagram. This signifies the multiplication of the original established word by the mingling of good luck and management 
In divination, the card means inheritance or material gain. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I was pointed to the nines because we are definitely dealing with a lot of this. It's even our our COVID-19 is has that nine and it's called COVID-19 because it came about in 2019 not 2020 2019 so even the the number associated with with it is the not is a nine and uh that's something to to take into consideration as well um so anyway we're going to leave it off here because we're at another uh, over an hour and uh, that's it for now. I'm actually, my voice is getting tired and I'm tired. It is 4.55 in the Pacific, oh, 4.56, 4.56 in the Pacific, you guys. I hope that this has been uh, helpful for you, for you and uh stay tuned we're gonna get into more of the devil card coming up here tomorrow i hope you guys have a great rest of your day or tomorrow i mean later on today <laughs> hope you're doing great uh again please reach out if i can help you take a look at the groupon that i have going on now uh and my website oh announcement there too my website will be mobile optimized by the end of next week i'm super stoked on that so uh i guess that's it guys infinite love and blessings don't forget the key is to create i love you already and always live in love bye for now guys <laughs>